Hi everyone, I'm Lloyd Smith, part of the customer success team here at Yellowfin. Today I'll be showing you the best practice for dashboards broken down into three key steps. To give a bit of context of who I am, I have over three years experience working with business intelligence and data visualization space, historically working with one of Yellowfin's customers, building thousands of reports and dashboards. I've joined Yellowfin to help assist customers in reaching their business goals and objectives. Today I'll be going through it in three steps creating the right dashboard to service insights. And in here, I'll be talking about the dashboard best practices, the best way to find insights within your data and making insights actionable within a dashboard. Throughout the webinar, I'll be using a set of data from the crime of Chicago. The purpose of this webinar is not to focus on the data itself, but how to use dashboards to find insights that turn into actions. When it comes to business intelligence, I truly believe that it, there is no industry or business that can live without it. Regardless of whether you're in B or vertical, making sure that you are using data to make informed decisions is absolutely imperative. To know where you're going, look at where you've been. Businesses will spend money in order to try and find out what they could be doing better, whether it's increasing sales or trying to remove inefficiencies and bottlenecks, but the answer is typically within your data. Now let's set the scene for our example today. Ryan is the chief of crime analytics in the local police force, and he is trying to understand everything about incidents, including hotspots, what kind of incidents and trends. He goes to his dashboard, which has a number of reports that are in tabular form. This is from his previous experience of pouring through online spreadsheets, because that's how it's always been done. After going through thousands of rows in this report, he can't come to any particular conclusion or what to direct the other members in his team to do. What ends up happening is that Ryan reaches out to his data analysts for help, but it usually takes them also too long to do the manual analysis. So the crime team misses the opportunity to take action. So how do we solve this? The first step is to consider is building the right kind of dashboard to help surface insights. To do this, you need to understand who is your intended audience and is your dashboard built for the consumer? Everyone has different access levels of data and depending who they are within the organization, what they do every day. We'll look at the data in different forms to help them do their jobs. We can see that within our initial example, our dashboard wouldn't help Ryan at all. He's spending way too much time in the weeds trying to find the nuggets of gold to help him lower crime in his area. So the in a better form that data in on the dashboard. Let's have a look at that. Using high-level KPIs to help the intended consumer understand the state of their world. High-level KPIs are a great way to enable consumers to orient themselves quickly and understand what they're doing well and what they could be doing better. This is especially important for dashboards that receive their data from multiple separate sources. Once you have built the high-level numbers, then it's important to build the exploration paths that can be drilled into to get further information. To ensure you're not overwhelming the consumer at the start, staggering your exploration paths, you can build drill paths. This can include drill downs, drill throughs, and drill anywheres. Either way, you can present a summary to detail path that gives you the right type and the amount of information to the user that is they explore the dashboard. Now remember, Reports and dashboards are here to help you build the story and come to conclusions with supporting data. The majority of the time, one report or chart isn't enough to tell the entire story. You will need a few, but if you try and put too many things into one dashboard, it will become incredibly noisy. A good layout for the dashboard. Having your most important reports at the top with less important ones at the bottom. The next one is logically grouping your relevant reports together. For example, if it makes sense to see the reports of incidents by location and arrests, and then by locations together, then have them all in one same section, tab or line. Ensuring you can see and understand the visualization in an allocated space. The general rule is if you can't see or understand the chart properly, or you have to go at a glance, or if you have to maximize or zoom into the report, then it is most likely being given the wrong allocated space. Note that you also shouldn't have all your reports spaced out in the same way. 
Some charts will need more screen states, others won't. If you're looking at the charts on a dashboard and you feel like you're looking through a pinhole to understand what you're seeing, then it's time to rethink your space allocation. Minimizing the amount of scrolling required. If we have too many charts on a single dashboard, but they are still relevant to a specific user, we can always break them into what we call subtabs, a great way to declutter pages and logically group content together. The general rule is if you shouldn't be scrolling for a long period of time to get the report that you want. Making sure everything lines up. In order to be more visually pleasing, if you have a number of items on a report or multiple reports on a dashboard, ensure that they all line up perfectly. Our report, canvas and dashboard layouts are great for this. You can utilize the grid lines in canvas to do so. You don't want your dashboard to look too disorganized. Keeping it clear. The report and dashboard author should be asking the question, if I'm not there to explain it, will they understand it? And finally, keeping it consistent. An example of this is using specific colors to track your metrics and your dimensions. For example, if the number of arrests is shown in red, ensure that this is consistent on all dashboards and reports. With Yellowfin's use of org ref codes, you can set them up once it applies for all reports, charts, and dashboards. The focus of this particular webinar is on dashboard best practices. However, dashboards are comprised of reports and charts, so it would be very difficult to speak about the former without speaking about the latter. My colleague Courtney Coulter presented a webinar on data visualization best practices a couple of months ago, which will be linked in the description if you would like to learn more. But just to give a bit of a recap of her webinar. Using colors to represent different teams, regions, and product lines. Using the report names that make sense. Having multiple KPIs, summaries, and on the same report. Using conditional formatting to illustrate points. Titles on the reports, the units of measurement, labeling your X and Y axis, and using the appropriate standard KPI metrics. For example, a green tick is positive and a red cross is negative, and using the correct prefix and suffix. The last thing I'd also mention is the correct sorting, whether it's alphabetical, rating, demographics, dates, or ascending and descending. Now let's jump into the dashboard and see this as a working example. So, Going through what we've you know, kind of been through already, this is now Ryan's updated dashboard. From the very, very top, it's built for him and the analyst who built it, built it with him in mind. The first thing that it really shows off are its KPIs and its summaries and its big number headers here. So the four most important things to Ryan are his incidents, the arrests, the domestic disputes and the non-domestic disputes. He doesn't trawl, trawl through thousands of lines of data. He's got the quick big numbers here and these big spark lines here. And what it can tell us straight away, that it is quite consistent, but there has been a decline, which is fantastic, in all four categories. The next thing here, what are the daily and targeted arrests? So this one here is a good example of using the realty up correctly. We've got four different reports all on one line, but it actually looks quite nice. It doesn't look too cluttered or anything like that. We're using dials here, also our KPIs, you know, showing red is bad. In our example here, further along to the right is positive. Moving further along, we've got here, what is the trends of incidents? So we've got our incidents here on the top line and our arrests here at the bottom line. And the reason that this one's particularly brought in is a really good example as well, is it's also using all the realty up. So this would only look good if it's using all the realty in one line, in one section there. We have two reports, the reports below where the incidents occur and how domestic um, incidents vary by location. If we're looking here by the geolocation, we can already see that this is going to be one of the wards with the most amount of incidents. And if we want to drill into it and understand a little bit more, we have that ability to see the incidents, the arrest in that particular ward, which was Ward 28. Now, if we want to look at it in a bit of a different way, we can look at it in location. So we're actually looking at the same data, but we're focusing using a different, I guess, column or metric to break it up. We can also drill into this information as well. So we want to see, you know, where it came from on location and we can see the majority of the incidents came from the apartments. Last one we have here is our heat grid and it's about what time of day do the incidents appear. 
And this already gives us information that's you know kind of different and not everyone would be, you know, I think people would be surprised about, is that the majority of incidents actually appear in the middle of the day here between Monday and Friday, as opposed to later, you know, on the Saturday and Sunday when you would expect it. And if you want to focus particularly on that data, you can actually just hover over it, filter, and that's actually going to adjust all your reports here at the top here as well. With a few small changes, we have now made our dashboard a lot easier to read, it's more concise and accessible for Ryan. Now let's go back to our presentation. So let's cover you know, what we've covered off here. And those are our best practice summaries. Number one, building the dashboards for the right audience. Number two, having high level KPIs. Number three, building the exploration paths. And that means you know, being able to drill in and get more additional information. Number four, the layout of your dashboard. And number five, the data visualization itself. The second step in this presentation is going to be on that plus one in traditional dashboards, finding insights faster. This is how we can take our dashboards beyond traditional self-service traditional self -service data discovery. Rather than talking to a slide, let's go back into our Yellowfin and show you what other vendors can't do. Going back to our example of Ryan, he logs into his traditional dashboard, it looks nice and clean, and it's tailored to his role, which is great. As you saw before, he has the ability to drill down, fill, um, go through data exploration, but he's also got the actually the ability to do some filtering here. So I'm going to move this to April, and I'm going to filter on assaults. So we're having a look through. And upon this exploration, Ryan comes up, can actually come up with more questions than answers. Why is, you know, War 28 a crime hotspot like we showed before? Questions that would need further analysis and more data would actually potentially create more reports. So whilst his workflow isn't incorrect, there is a better way to streamline this process that takes dashboards to the next level. Using Yellowfin's assisted insights, you can now leverage AI to make your dashboards and data work for you, as opposed to the other way around. So if I was gonna use dashboard assisted insights here, I actually wanna have a look at the 11th of April because I do see a spike in the data, and I would like to actually analyze it and compare it with the previous day and see what the difference is. So with the assistive insight, it empowers the business user to find hidden insights faster without involving potentially overworked analysts all the time. The workflow required to get the key drivers of a change can take days or weeks, but with assisted insights, it can be solved with a click of a button. As I mentioned, we've now seen that there's the 11th, which is, you know, one of the hotspots of that day. We're a bit concerned as to why there are more incidents on that day and, you know, even less arrests. So now we've got here on our right, our auto analysis of reports. So if we go to our variance by arrests, oh, excuse me, we can, if we go to our variance by arrested, we can actually see that there's been, despite an increase in incidents, there's been more arrests as well, which is obviously a bit of a concern what's going on there. And if we go further along here, we've also noticed there has been a decrease in domestic crimes, but there's been an increase in non-domestic crimes. So if I want to give this information to someone, I can just comment them in the screen here and get some more information. So if I want to send it to Chad, our analyst, or Ryan, the chief analytics, I can do that. Or I can go through, click on this button here and edit my analysis as well. We have now looked at the traditional ways to create a dashboard. And with the new technology, how to make our dashboards work for us. Finding hidden insights quickly and collaborating together. So what's next? Facilitation and action within the dashboard itself. Now let's go back to our presentation. This here is one of the core fundamental flaws in dashboards that is often incredibly overlooked, closing the loop in decision making. Having a sleek looking dashboard which gives you all the answers is only part of the solution. Finding information that you wouldn't have otherwise is also just a part of it. But almost no one talks about what comes next and that is action. Typically a user will find something interesting in their data, they may think about it, let someone else know about it, and then nothing ever really gets done and it's just forgotten about. Without proper action, no changes will be made within your business and there will be no new outcomes. So how do you encourage action and what can action consist of? In the upcoming Yellowfin release, 
there are a number of changes that revolutionize dashboard creation and workflow. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but we're bringing the free form canvas from the report builder to the dashboard. And with that comes a whole bunch of new interactivity and integrations that we'll be talking about in our upcoming virtual summits. And why is that exciting? With these upcoming changes, we can create action triggers within the dashboard workflow. In traditional dashboards, the goal is to look at the information, interpret it, determine an action, and perform that somewhere else. With the ability to integrate third-party apps and touch points into your dashboard, you will be able to execute and trigger events within the dashboard. You'll be able to push and pull data, build custom workflows, all within your dashboard. Following up from our earlier example of Ryan, he logs into his crime dashboard, explores it, and notices there's a spike in incidents on the 15th of October, 2019. He uses assisted insights to determine what also could have occurred on that particular day that led to the spike. The major correlation found was a change in weather and a rise in non-domestic crimes, which could have led to the overall increase in incidents. Typically at this point, Ryan would either talk to someone to take action or enter another roster planning system to check officer availability and then allocate the right ones to these hotspots. With the new capability of the upcoming Yellowfin to embed actions, our example would look like this. With the insights right in front of him and with his dashboard, which is already integrated with widgets and actions to his own roster allocation system, he can move the right officers to crime hotspots in real time without leaving the dashboard, leading to a quicker and better outcome. And in this case, a safer city. So as a summary, what have we covered off? We've covered off how to create a dashboard to service insights. We do this by ensuring that our dashboard is made for our intended audience. We also make sure that the reports and the layouts of the dashboard are clear and concise. The best way also to find insights of your data, and that can be either with collaboration or using our assistive insights tool, and then making your insights actionable. And that will be building on the action steps within your workflow, which will be a, you know, a big part of the next release of Yellowfin. So what are the next steps? Please stay up to date with Yellow for news and topics of anyone who's interested. Please subscribe to our next Bright, Bright Talk webinar. I particularly recommend registering for our virtual summit to hear about our next release. Also, please follow us on social media, including LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you've learned something, and we look forward to seeing you for our next webinar.